On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the pseudo elements before and after and how we can add them to our Webflow projects to provide additional styling without markup. This is all, all of this, this website's great. It's, it's people have created stuff just with um, a single div. So all they've got is just a div and the, the things they've, they've created here is absolutely fantastic. Welcome to Webflow and Code. This is the uh, series where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. So the before and after are what's known as pseudo elements, not to be confused with pseudo selectors, uh, something like hover and active and things like that. These are pseudo elements and we can treat them like elements. Um, we can provide styling to them just like any other elements um, and we'll get into exactly how to do that in the episode. They enable us to create elements before or after content and it's really helpful cr for creating additional styling across the whole website um, and you can do some really cool things with it. It's important to know however though that these aren't readable by screen readers or SEO spiders so we, we have to be mindful about what content we create and, and the impact that we want that to have. Um, it's really useful for things when you, you just, you're just providing styling. We'll get into it, but you can actually provide text in these, in these pseudo elements. Um, but again, it's not advisable because these, these, the text isn't being picked up or read by, by uh, spiders. And these, thing, these pseudo elements can't be applied to things like input or image because they don't actually have any content. So what do pseudo elements actually look like? Now I've got a project here open in Copen and we can have a look at what they look like and how we can use them. So you'll probably see them like this. We've got before or we've got after. Now you may see them written with just one semi, uh, one colon here. Now that's an old specification and the new specification says they have uh, two colons. It's important to note, however, if you're using IE8, if you need to support IE8, um, I'm not sure many of you do, but if you if you are, you're supposed to support IE8, then you need to use one colon because it doesn't support the, the double colon um, specification. So, but for our, our use case, we'll use the double um, just, to, just to provide a bit of differentiation there and, and to be correct in the new spec. So that's how they look like. And, we, and, and basically we need to apply that to an, an element. So for our use case, right, we're gonna, we're gonna affect this um, heading here, right? So let's apply it to the class. So anything with the class of icon, we are affecting the before element there and we need to open it out. So, so when you create a pseudo element, it needs to have a content um, property on there, right? And, and this gives it sort of, this gives it presence, this gives it space. So every before element needs to have a content and then we can treat it just like any other, any other element um, that we want it to. So display block um, and background red. We need to give it a height too. And there you go. We got, we can see our content element. And you can see that it's, We've got our my header. Let's just make that different for a second. Just say so. there we go. Um, let that reload. You can see that the before, because we've we've targeted before. You can see that red block that we've um, placed there um, is appearing before. And then again, we can just do it if we just if we just apply it to the after as well. Then you'll see that we got those red uh, boxes before and after the the icon. What you can do with this content, there's a few things we can do with this content. We can obviously have it blank, and that will mean there's no content within there. But it gives the the before and after pseudo elements uh, presence and space. But we can also add text in here. And what you'll see then is you'll see the hello. Let's let's make this inline block. What you'll see is that we can add text before or after, and and my mouse doesn't select that text. It's just it's just to uh, remind you that this cannot be read or understood by screen readers or or SEO spiders. What you can also do with this is actually you can put um, attributes, the contents of attributes, and and this this could be a lot of uh, we could use a lot of 
strange, um, interesting things with this. So we're using that, we're setting the content as the attribute of the ID. So if we add an ID attribute here, uh, and then we write that hello, then you'll see that we get that text. So this could be something quite, you could do some interesting things with this, like if you were, um, I don't know, you could maybe provide a shadow, uh, make a shadow of the text or something like that. There, there, there are lots of things you can do. Um, you can also add an image here. Um, it doesn't, you can't resize that image. So the image that you put, the image URL that you put here needs to be the exact size that you need it to. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with the content uh, property. But for our use case, we're really just, we're really just going to leave it blank to give it space um, and, and to be able to work with it. So now we know how we write before or after elements and how we give them presence and then we can work with them just like any other element. Let's look at some examples of what practically we can do with uh, the before and after element, the pseudo elements. I'm go a common use case with this is, is, um, is make it, putting icons next to, next to list items. Um, so let's go ahead and show you how, that's, how that might look. So I'm gonna be using a library called Font Awesome. Again, we'll cover we'll cover Font Awesome and CSS libraries in another lesson, but um, this Font Awesome is a library that enables us to bring in icons um, into our project. So um, we can set we can treat like I say we can treat this before element just like any other elements as long as we give it uh, a content. And what we've done here, I've imported the library. I've already done that. I've imported the library, and again, don't worry about the specifics of that. You can do that. That will be done slightly differently in Webflow. Um, we set the font family as this. This this need this is um, required by Font Awesome to do to set the font family like uh, as Font Awesome five free. We need to set the font weight as nine hundred. Now here's where it gets interesting because the content. What this is, um, is if we go onto Font Awesome's website, now you can see how we can mark this up, but they also give you the Unicode character of this particular icon. If, you, if you'd hadn't guessed, Font Awesome is a, a, a font that is just made up of icons. So each character represents an icon rather than a letter. So they actually give you the Unicode character for the, for the icon that you want to use. So if we flip back to um, our project here, we escape the we escape the characters with the backslash, and then we paste that um, we have, we paste that Unicode character into our into our content, and then as you can see, that's now rendered on the left hand side of that on that um, heading, and all, you know just to tidy it up a bit, we've got a margin right, and we've got we've got a color color red, so. This is a quite a common use case. This could be another icon, um, whatever icon you want. But if I add the icon class to this, then you'll see that it renders out. And now I can apply that icon to any anything that I apply this class to. Another popular way that we can use the before or after pseudo elements is on hover effects. And again, it's it's great because we're not adding any additional markup to create these these effects. Um, so further down in my project here, I'll just scroll down. We've got just a div with um, a hover link. Um, you know, if if you were to create if you were to create a div with an image inside of it, another div with a heading and a link. Um, with with the before and after elements, we can create a nice hover effect like this. This this is something I've just an idea that I've stolen off of this website. Uh, let me let me move the URL down so you can see it. That's the URL. I'll put it in the description. But there's lots of cool hover effects. And if you remember from our first episode, we spoke about inspecting elements and 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 figuring out how how they're how they're created to then transfer that to our Webflow projects. So I've just mocked up something here, and as you can see, the markup is is fairly simple. We're not adding any additional kind of Markup. We're not adding any additional elements or anything like that. We're just cre we're creating the, the the necessary elements needed for something like this, um, and then through the before and after elements, we're adding these hover effects. So how am I doing that? Well, first of all, um, I'm setting up my um, we're using um, position absolute, and if you, uh, maybe maybe we can do another episode of of position absolute and position relative and things like that. But assuming that um, this is quite a common um, 
hack, I guess you would call it, that we've got a we've got a the wrapping element. The hover hover link here has a position of relative, um, and we're just setting some nice um, some things that make it look a bit nicer. And then the background is like a dark grey, and we'll cover why that's dark grey in just a second. So the image within side of the hover link, we're, we're giving that an opacity and we're transitioning that opacity. Um, again, we can cover these in, in other episodes. For, right, for this use case, it's really just to, to, to make it look a bit nicer. But what, what the, the after element is responsible for, if we hover over, you can see this white um, box here that, that, nav, that sort of fades in. And that's again achieved without adding another div um, or anything like that. Um, it, it's absolutely possible that we could have had, we could have uh, done that with a div, but it, this is just proving the point of what you can do with the with the before and after pseudo elements. So we've got a content of we we've got no content just to give it some layout. We're adding that border. We've positioned it absolute so it floats within the um, it, within the within the hover link, and then we're setting the top, bottom, right. Um, Top, bottom, right, and left to the to, to one ems from the from the outside of the hover link, and and we're setting an opacity because right now you can't see it, so that's because the opacity is zero, and we've just moved it to the left hand side, and then when we hover over it, this is where it gets a bit complicated. When we hover over the the link, the the hover link um, div. Then move, then affect, make the opacity of the after one. So we fade it in, but not only do we fade it in, we we actually transform it to a zero. So right here, the transform is minus ten, so it's just slightly to the left. And then when we hover over it, it moves it to where it should be, and you can see that happening now in the in the example that we've got going on here. I've got a bunch of other stuff here just to make it look a little bit prettier. And things like that. I can sh I can share this with you in the in the description if you'd like, but really I'm just trying to demonstrate the the things that we can do with the before and after elements. And and you know if anything this is this website is a great example of some really cool bef um, effects we can do before and after. Um, again, not writing any additional markup at all, and that's that's one of the most important things because we should be separating our HTML should be all about content and then our CSS should be all about styling and we're really just separating those two things and and not not adding any additional content for SEO spiders or anything like that to get confused about um, in the content side of things. So I hope that explains uh, the before and after and what's possible uh, with that. Um, let me know what you do with those because there, there, some, some people can do some crazy things. In fact, there's, um, I'm just gonna, there's, there's a website, a single div, here we go. So this is, all, all of this, this website's great. It's, it's people have created stuff just with um, a single div. So all they've got is just a div. And the, the things they've, they've created here is absolutely fantastic. And I can guarantee you this stuff has been done with the before. It's the only way to do it really to, um, with before and after pseudo elements. And just look at some of this stuff, I mean, it's just incredible, just with the before and after. So it's really incredible the things you can do with it. So do experiment, take a look at just a div.com, a single div.com, sorry, a dot single div.com. And um, yeah, until next time, happy no coding. If you haven't subscribed already, then do so and hit the bell notification icon so you'll, you'll hear about all the episodes that I'm gonna release every single week.